And that is idolatry because the word idolatry is the word E-I-D-O-L-O-L-A-T-R-E-I-A. That is the Greek word. If you don't think it's alive and well, you are badly mistaken. It is the very essence of everything that goes on in America. This seems to be a word that is lost in the past to most people. <coughs> most people in America think it is an ancient word that belongs to a civilization that has some statue for their god in a Polynesian island in the South Pacific, or that it is an ancient Roman or Greek statue that is dug up by some archaeologist. Let's just see if it is, if that's what it is. Idolatry comes from the word ido and latruo, L-A-T-R-E-U-O. Latruo is the word to serve, and ido means to see. Idolatry means to serve what you put into your eyes. Is that going on in America? How about a new car, a new diamond ring, a new a new house? How about covetousness, huh? Covetousness, pleonectes, P-L-E-O-N-E-K-T-E-S. Now, most people think covetous means to want something that somebody else has. That's not the meaning of the word. The word covetousness in the Greek means to want more. I want more square footage in my house. I want more car. I want more money. I want more per hour. I want more of everything. Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I doubt seriously until you get to where Paul was in the fourth chapter of Philippians, most of us cannot say that because we don't know what that word content means. Well, I'm content. I'm sitting here with my iced tea, and I'm, and I'm sitting here laying in my hammock, and I'm, and I'm watching TV, and I'm comfortable. That's not content. The word content there in Philippians 4.11 is the word autarkes, a U-T-A-R-K-E-S. It comes from auto, A-U-T-O, and A-R-K-E-O. Arkeo means to ward off or to push away or drive away auto. It don't mean to drive a car. Auto is the word self. An automobile is self-mobile. This means to ward off or push away self. When you become content, that's when you push self away. I want us to look and just see. I'm going to get into prophecy in a moment. But let's just see if we have idolatry in America. Look at 1 Corinthians 5. Look at 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. Here's a man having an affair with his stepmother, and Paul said, pull away from this man. Don't have anything to do with him. Don't fellowship with him. Don't eat with him. He says, I wrote unto you in verse 9, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with fornicators of this world. He's saying, I'm not talking about literal fornicators only. I'm talking about spiritual fornication or with covetous or extortioners, or with idolaters, with covetous people or idolaters, for then you'd have to completely leave the world and go out of the world to get away from them. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man is called a, a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, wanting more, don't hang around people that all they do is talk about themselves and want more. They're idolaters. Oops, maybe somebody hears that way. Maybe everybody here has been that way. Huh? Including me, yours truly. Or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner. With such an one, don't gather with them on Friday night and try to convert them when the Holy Spirit will not deal with them. 
rebuke them twice in Titus 3.10, and after the second admonition, reject them because they that are such, they are, the Bible says they're heretics. You say, well, that sounds like a strange word. Is that somebody who's cursing God? No, no, Her heretic comes from the word heretizo, H-A-I-R-E-T-I-Z-O, and that word means to choose for oneself. I'll do my own deciding. I have free will. I can do what I want. That's a man who believes he can do his own will and have what he wants. Stay away from them. Avoid them after the second admonition. Yeah, but I think this person's listening. I think if I keep talking to them enough. Do you know if a person's elect and the word of God is written in their heart, it doesn't take a train load full of truth to get them. It takes just a spoonful, and that's enough to cause them to come to truth. And if you, besides that, second, second Thessalonians 3, 14 says, if a man calls himself a brother and he doesn't walk according to the truth, withdraw from him and so that he will be ashamed. And it, don't treat him as an enemy, admonish him as a brother, because if you'll pull away from him, then he will come around to the truth. We, we're supposed to be having church discipline, but most people don't believe in that. Now, look over here in, in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Look here. Do we have any idolaters in the room? Whew, boy, this is the hardest thing in the world to get over. Look at, look at Ephesians. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. He says we need to put away filthiness and foolish talking there in verse 4. Jesting needs to go. I love the word jesting. It's the word eutrapelia. E-U-T-R-A-P-E-L-I-A. E-U-T-R-A-P-E-L-E-I-A. Eutrapelia means an easy turning of the head. Someone that turns your head real easy by jesting and joking about the Word of God like that knucklehead Jesse Duplantis. I despise that man. He takes the Word of God and makes a joke out of it, and he knows nothing about the truth. He is a disgusting, repulsive man. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, nor a person who wants more who is an idolater. That's what it says in the original text. Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. If God doesn't deal with you to crush you and crush me, we have no inheritance and get rid of this thing called self and covetous that all we think about is me and what I want. Look at Colossians, the third chapter. Look here in verse 5. Mortify therefore. Mortify. Necroo. N-E-K-R-O-O. -O, kill off. Necromancy is talking to the dead. Necroo means to kill off. Kill off. Therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idololatria. It is serving what you see.